We live in a world full of technology. We never moved as fast as we are now. We are never as, have never been as smart as we are now and efficient. So from the perspective of technology, the way how we travel, the way how we innovate, hyperloops, flying taxis, and I've heard we're gonna go for holidays on Mars very soon. So from a technology perspective, it seems like everything is figured out. Well, I'm here to actually poke you into a different direction. In all of this world of fantastic connectivity, mobility, and technology, have you actually thought about what we're going to wear while we are traveling on warp speed? Because let me tell you, there is one thing for certain, doesn't matter what kind of technology and who and when and where, whatever is gonna happen. The question what we are going to wear will literally touch all of us. So, I wanna take you a little bit on a journey with me and explore the possibilities what other people have done around that question. Because of course, we are not the only ones who want to think and who want to know what we're going to wear in future. I mean, think about it, Icarus. For me, that was wearable technology. There was somebody who wanted to fly and he just upgraded his clothes. Right? Who doesn't want to fly? So. I talked about mobility just before, and we're going to continue with mobility because this is not the first time that we are in the age of mobility. Around the 19th century, we had a huge new invention which made us move very, very fast and independent. Bicycles. That was the new technology. Interestingly, especially for women, because it gave them new mobility. But something else also happened, because back then women had to wear corsets. Kind of unpractical when you're on a bicycle. So what happened with the introduction of new, te new technology, the clothes had to change too. And people actually got really innovative. Ita Rehm was a seamstress, and she developed a athletic suit for women, adapting to new technology, still looking pretty, and able to work with that new form of movement. The US Vogue in 1938 asked a group of artists to imagine what we are going to wear in the year 2000. <laughs> Look at that picture. That guy actually has a mobile phone on his chest, a radio station receiver on his belt. We have that all now, right? Well, luckily, except that antenna as a head. <laughs> MIT wearable computing class, 1990. Some of these guys, Clive Thompson, Steve Mann, they were actually the ones who inspired the project of Google Glasses. What they wanted to explore was how can we actually wear information? This was before the smartphone. There was a deep desire of carrying electronics with you, being connected, upgrading your clothes. Because again, we're getting faster, smarter, more efficient. Just a pretty jacket doesn't cut it anymore. It has to have more function. In this case, of course, we kind of wish them if they would have teamed up with a fashion designer, uh, because clearly that didn't go to market. But it all worked, do you see? 
fashion designers. Who's in Shalain, early 2000? It's called Table Dress. It was an art performance, it was on, on, uh, it was on, a, on a runway. But the interesting thing is actually is it shows the desire that clothes and the things around us need to fulfill more than just one function. Today we call it sustainability. 2015, Solar Sweater by Pauline van Dongen. And here the circle closes. There's a new technology coming in. Our clothes have to adapt because they have to solve a problem they weren't built for in the first place. Just remember the bicycle. New movement, but we had to change in order to adopt it. In this case, we have a mobile phone. What's the biggest pain in mobile phones? Battery runs out. Wouldn't it be handy to have like a solar sweater, which just like charges the phone all the time? And you look pretty. So, that's our first round of travels because now we are finally in the future. And guess what? We are not the only ones who are thinking about what we're going to wear in the future. Think about it, all of these science fiction novels, you know, starting with Star Trek, of course, retro. Captain Marvel, Superwoman, Black Panther. If you watch these movies, there is a lot of wearable technology. It's kind of standard that your clothes have function. They're there to protect us. They're there to give us superpowers. They're there to make us fly. Wait, we had that before, right? So, at that point, we're changing the question to what are we going to wear on Mars, because it's very clear, it doesn't matter how many hundreds of years are in between, we always go back to the same point. It has to protect us, it has to give us superpowers, makes us fly. Okay, tick, I gotta get off stage now. No, still have some minutes left. The interesting question here is actually who is going to make it? Because if you would found somebody who made it, we already would sit here, he would fly, glow, kind of. So in my, in my work um, for a lot of high-end tech companies and big fashion brands, we always hit this point. We get like, yeah, we can do everything, it's amazing, and no, what, no, no, no. So then I start with three points. Number one, too much technology. There is such a thing, then too much technology. Because we are now on the one side in that fortunate situation where technically we can almost make everything like this happen. We finally have, microchips are small enough, we finally have all of the ingredients. But only because we have the ability to do that should we stuff all of that technology into one jacket. I mean, we can but only because you can, really should you? Because here's number two. The market won't accept it. For the individual customer, too much technology is actually really scary, especially when technology gets very, very close to your body. Because too much technology makes the customer afraid that we turn them into a robot. And that means we are losing our humanity. Because after all, it is really difficult to establish an emotional connection with a function. Number three. So who is going to make that all work? Fashion designers. Because they actually know how to develop emotional products, 
fashion is a very, very emotional state. Now, as might some of you know, once you like, really, really like something, price doesn't matter. On the other side, fashion designers are like architects. They are actually building the framework. You could say they're actually the front-end designers, which you need. You know, they know how to make jackets and pants and shoes, handbags, jewelry. So you need those engineers to actually upgrade the back end. One of my examples for that is, is actually a big role model of mine. She touched all of us. You know her. She is one of the biggest fashion icons. So what she actually did is she combined a very important function to a very important piece of clothing. She absolutely got the balance right between comfort, functionality, style, and variability. And this is what I always say, it's like, you know, when you get stuck in something so complex, I'll always think about her. Because the ability to focus, tone it down, what is actually the functionality? Notice we are talking here about a functionality. Technology is the way to get to a certain function. Connecting with emotions. If you, make, if you manage to make somebody more pretty, you totally have them. The combination of all of them into a product. This power is more important in this tech time than ever. Coco Chanel. What she actually did, she was the one who put pockets on female jackets. It was a function because it made women more mobile. You could store things in your jackets. You had your hands free, not with a handbag. Here on the picture, you can actually also see this is a jacket with a double feature. It has double uh, pockets. Right? In a little side story, also because she was a really heavy smoker and she wanted to carry her cigarettes with her all the time. <laughs> and that's what I just so love. It's like the pragmatism of that. That's how we solve problems. I also call it the hashtag, the do it cuckoo way. So, dear designers, don't be afraid of technology. It's not your enemy, it's your friend. So, let's do it the cuckoo way. Be aware of your power. Thank you. <laughs>